What is up guys? I am super excited for today's video because I have finally installed the OEM appearance package on my 2019 Miata and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it on your car as well. Now a couple things you want to know before starting off with this project is that you do have to drill some holes into the bodywork. You need to install jack nuts, rivets, and there's about a total of six components that need to be installed. But don't worry, this process is not too difficult. The kit does come with instructions and templates for exactly where to drill the holes so I would say it's a lot more time consuming than it is necessarily difficult but make sure you carve out a big chunk of time in your day to go ahead and install all of these pieces. The second thing that you need to know before starting this project is you will need two specialty tools besides a drill, drill bits, and general screwdrivers you will need a jack nut installation tool. This is to install jack nuts along the bottom of the car and that's what actually holds these appearance package bits onto the car itself. I picked this one up online, it was about $45. You can not find them a little cheaper elsewhere. I'll make sure to add a link in the description below as to where I got this tool. You will also need a hand riveting tool. Now this one was only about $5 at Harbor Freight. Again, I'll add a link down below where you can find these at, but there are a couple rivets to install for the front splitter. So make sure you have both of these tools before you get this job started. Before you start, you will also want to clean the car or at least the bottom edges of the bodywork because the front front splitter, side seal extensions, and the rear diffuser all have sticky tape that helps hold them onto the body of the car. So you want to make sure the car is clean so that, that way that tape gets a nice stick to the body. It's not sticking to dirt and eventually will fall off. So make sure you clean at least the bottom edges of the car before starting this project. Now I purchased all of these components from the Mazda dealership that I used to work at, but it looks like they are also available on mossmiata.com. And there probably are some other online retailers where you can find all the OEM pieces at. But I'll go ahead and include the part numbers for all of these pieces down in the description below. Now one thing to mention is this little air deflector piece. Uh, Mazda says it is required with the front lip on this car. Not sure exactly why. I imagine it has something to do with the way the airflow underneath the car changes with this lip compared to no lip at all. So make sure you go ahead and buy this piece. It was only like $25 or $26. It's pretty cheap. And there is a different part for the RF. Again, not entirely sure why, but that process will also be a little bit different for installation. So just follow the instructions that come with the kit in order to know how to do that. Of course, I'll be installing the soft top component because I have a soft top but I'll go ahead and include both those part numbers down in the description below. And lastly, I wanna let you guys know that unfortunately I cannot show the installation of the rear spoiler on this video because I did install that one like a year or so ago, but the process is pretty much exactly the same as the other components on this car. You have to drill a couple holes and then the spoiler itself has sticky tape on it plus some studs that extend through the trunk lid. That's why we drill the holes and then you simply attach those to the trunk lid with some nuts that are included with the kit. Speaking of what's included, this kit does include all the hardware that you need. Other than that, you will need to bring a couple of specialty tools to the table like I just mentioned. So to sum it up, make sure you have a large chunk of time carved out for this installation. Clean the car or at least the bottom edges before starting and make sure you have those two specialty tools, the hand riveter and the jack nut installer before starting this job. And then also follow the printed instructions that come with it plus this video and you should be able to easily install all these components on your car. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so starting with the front of the car here, what you want to do first is to remove those little winglets there at the front of the car there. They do have rivets on them underneath so you need to probably drill those out. And then behind the bumper here, this is a poor demonstration because my fender liner is torn up from having these wheel spacers on, but the winglets are also connected by some plastic pop rivets. I think it's only this bottom one here. It might be the one that's up here as well, but make sure you remove those so that way you can take the winglets completely off. After you do remove the winglet, you are supposed to cut off this outer edge section. This is the part that runs up along the side of the bumper back there. So we do cut that off so that way the fender liner still has something to attach to. But as I'm missing part of my fender liner and I don't have the winglets anymore, I cannot do that. So unfortunately I won't be able to show that part, but wanted to show you guys here it is in the instructions. Once you have the winglets here removed and you're ready to proceed, go ahead and cut out this template here for the right hand, left hand sides. This will basically act as a guide for where to drill holes into the bumper so that way we have screws coming through the backside, holding the edges here of this appearance package front lip into the bumper. So go ahead and cut these out. 
tape them onto the bumper, and then drill the holes to eight millimeters. Next, you'll want to drill out some of these holes on the bottom of the bumper where the uh, front lip will attach to out to about 10 millimeters. I'm going to use a 5 16 drill bit. That's the closest thing that I have without going too far over because we still want to ensure there's enough material here for these jack nuts to grab onto. Speaking of these jack nuts, we use these instead of rivet nuts to attach to the bumper because these legs here will collapse and they'll grab onto the bumper. These are great for brittle materials. If you watched my video about how not to install a splitter, Note that I did not use these, I used rivet nuts instead, which are inappropriate for this application. So use the jack nuts that this thing comes with. Now when it comes to installing these jack nuts, you want to take a bolt that threads in and is actually longer than the nut itself. We need a little bit of overhang in order to use the tool here. So the way this works is you thread the bolt into the nut pretty much all the way until you see a little bit of it sticking through and you can still fit it into this rivet nut installer like this. Then when you squeeze the trigger, it actually pulls the bolt backwards and the jack nut stays here. And because it's pulling the bolt, it's pulling this end down and compresses these legs around the bumper there. So that's how these work. So you may have to go grab a bolt from a hardware store. I believe these are M5 bolts. And of course you can take one of the ones that comes in the hardware packet with the appearance package to the store if you need to find one that matches because those are not long enough by themselves to install these jack nuts. Now, once you get the jack nut into the bumper, the threads are just above where the end of this nut is. That's where you want it. You basically want to pull the uh, jack nut down and squeeze these all the way until you cannot pull this anymore. Be careful not to pull it too hard. You might be able to damage the bumper. Uh, you shouldn't, but don't stop just because this one stops. You need to make sure that those threads are all the way down so we have them close enough to the end of this that we get proper engagement with the hardware that we put in. So go ahead and complete it for the rest of these holes along the bumper. Now that we have all of the jack nuts in place, you want to take these foam spacers here, pop them out of this big square foam piece and apply them to the outer three jack nuts there and then attach this garnish piece with the side that has the foam block at the outer edge of the bumper simply line up the tabs with the slots in the bumper and push it up into place until you hear it click and then lastly you want to take this little foam piece and install it on the outer edge of the garnish here and it should also follow this leading edge of the bumper i think it goes long ways like that the instructions aren't super clear but I don't think this is a critical component, so just install it the best you can. You gotta peel off this backing here, and then do the same thing on the other side. Now it is time to install the splitter itself. So you wanna start by peeling this backing tape off just a hair in the middle, so that way we'll have something to pull on once we get the skirt attached. And what I would recommend doing is taking a couple screws here and just thread them in by hand so that way they are supporting the front lip while we attach the rest of them. So go ahead and get these bolts for all of the jack nuts in place. And then it also might be helpful to use a screwdriver just to get them started. So now at this point, you should have all eight of these bolts in for the front lip that go to the jack nuts. Now what the instructions want you to do is take these longer self-tapping screws and you're gonna send them right through here into some tabs on the bumper. Now, unfortunately, my bumper doesn't have these tabs anymore. They got ripped off when I broke my front splitter off. So instead, I'm just gonna zip tie them to these holes over here. Should be just fine, but if you still have those tabs there, make sure you use these self-tapper screws and tap them right into there. Once we do that, then we'll take the shorter self-tappers and we'll go through the wheel well here from behind the bumper to attach that little side piece there, the one that we drilled the hole for earlier. Also, don't forget to pull off that tape there so we can stick this spoiler straight to the bumper and then press it firmly from the inside out to make sure it sticks on good. And then we will go ahead and tighten up all of the screws again from the inside out. So now with the front lip fully attached, we can go ahead and take this air deflector piece here and attach it underneath the car. So what you want to do first is find the two holes that already exist in this undercover mark 110 millimeters or 11 centimeters forward, so towards the front of the car, and make a mark directly in front of both of those holes. And then you want to apply some tape to mark that. That will be the line where we will actually attach 
the front air deflector. From there, you can tape it onto the undercover, make sure that you have even spacing on both sides, and then we can begin to drill holes where there are already four tiny holes pre-drilled in the air deflector itself. So I took a 730 seconds drill bit to open those holes up. Now, one thing I noticed when I drilled through is that the drill actually wanted to pull the air deflector down off the tape. So I drilled the two outside holes as best I could. I think it threw off the alignment of the air deflector just a little bit, but won't be a big deal. And then I went ahead and installed two rivets to hold the air deflector on while I then drilled the other two holes. Now, the way this rivet tool works is you want to insert the small end into the rivet tool all the way stick that through the hole that you just drilled and squeeze the handle completely similar to what we did with the jack nuts now it took me a couple of squeezes to get that rivet fully seated in so make sure you squeeze it all the way open it up and put the rivet completely inside the tool again and keep doing that until it actually breaks off that small end of the rivet itself. Once that happens, the rivet is fully seated and you can continue to the next one. So do this on all four holes and then you will have installed the air deflector. Now the front lip spoiler is completely installed so we can go ahead and move on to the side skirts. All right, now it's time to install the side skirts. Now these are a little bit tricky because as you can see, there are quite a few templates that we need to cut out and tape onto the body of the car. This one's also equally as terrifying, if not more than the front, because we are drilling some holes on the side up there by the rear fender and then underneath the car as well. But the first step here is to cut out these templates and paste them onto the car according to the directions. So take your 5 16 drill bit, that's what I'm using, and drill out these holes. And now with the holes all drilled, go ahead and break out your jacknut installer tool and install these four jack nuts on the holes on the bottom of this OEM side skirt that we just drilled. So now we also need to remove this pop rivet right here because the side skirt is gonna go right over this fender liner and then there's a new pop rivet that came with the side skirts that will attach over all of it. Now take your new side skirt and you see this red tape just like we had on the front bumper. Go ahead and start to peel it off just a little bit because we need access to it to peel the rest off once we attach the side skirt. I like to fold it down and angle to ensure that it's accessible once we actually attach this to the bumper. But you'll see on the back side here that there are two little pop rivets. We're gonna insert those first into the holes that we drilled over here on the side of the car. So make sure it goes around the front up there and then just pop these into place. Now we take this new fastener and we go ahead and insert it where we took the old one out up here in the front wheel well. And then what you wanna do is take these four bolts and install them into the jack nuts. Don't tighten them down completely yet because we will then apply upward pressure to the side skirt and peel off the tape starting from the front and working our way back. Make sure you give it a good push to make sure that the tape sticks to the side skirt and then we'll tighten up all of the bolts underneath. All right, and there you have it. One OEM side skirt installed. We need to do the exact same process on the other side, but now let's go ahead and take care of the rear diffuser. All right, now that we've installed the front lip spoiler and the side skirts, it is now time to install the rear diffuser section. I think this one's actually the easiest of all of them to do besides maybe the rear trunk lid spoiler. Now this rear diffuser is going to be very similar to the way that we installed the front uh, lip spoiler and the side skirts. So we will cut out the templates so we know where to drill the holes. And then we will also use the double-sided tape that's provided on the diffuser itself to help secure it to the bumper. Let's go ahead and get started. So we have the templates taped on. This one leads to line up with this edge where the bumper cuts up for the exhaust pipe. So line it up with this edge here and then the edge of the bumper there. Same thing with the one on the left side. There's a little edge right here where it curves and then goes straight, so it needs to line up with that corner and then just go all the way down. One thing I like to do is take the piece that I'm about to put on and just hold it here by hand to make sure that the holes do in fact line up before drilling it. All right, they do line up, so let's go ahead and drill the holes, this time using the 5 16 drill bit. <laughs> Now that the holes are drilled, we need to remove these tapping screws here and here. Disregard these little brackets. These are for my diffuser, so I will be putting the diffuser back on after I do the uh, appearance package diffuser. You can use them in tandem, and it's actually going to close up that gap, so that I think that's going to look really, really nice. But yeah, go ahead and remove these here, and then down towards the wheel well, 
You'll have two bolts here. Again, I took these out because I had to remove my diffuser, but you want to remove the bolt that is closest to the wheel well here. And then once you remove all those screws, you will actually install the spacers that came with the appearance package kit, apply the bumper, and then reattach all of the screws to hold it in tight. Now take these two nuts and apply them onto the studs. They're located on this rear diffuser itself and just get them started. Don't tighten them up quite yet. Now that those are provisionally attached, we'll go ahead and peel off the sticky tape here. And you wanna start at the middle and really press it upwards and work your way to the outside. Now that that's done, go ahead and attach these self-tapping screws in place, tighten up those nuts, and then the self-tapper screws at the corners as well. Well guys, that is how you install the appearance package on an ND Miata, and here's how it looks on my car outside of the garage. This thing looks so amazing with the appearance package. It definitely should have came with it from the factory, but I cannot believe that I didn't add it to this car sooner. I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that the video itself and the printed instructions are clear enough for you guys to do it on your own. Make sure that when you do take on this project, you carve out a big chunk of time. It took me probably about five hours total to do this start to finish with a couple breaks here and there as well. So as always, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to keep up with all the latest videos that I post. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.